Hey guys, RC here back with Bullbound College Football and American Football Journeyman. We are in Season 3 and this is Episode 17. Uh, last episode we hit the first five weeks of the season. Uh, we had four games. We are currently 3-1 and one overall, 1-0 one and oh in the conference. We have the number 11 ranked offense in the nation, number 24 ranked defense. And our starting quarterbacks, already over 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, four interceptions. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, two sacks for Hayes, and uh, he leads the team. And Yarborough with two interceptions, but only four return yards. So I kind of wanted to come in and show you this. So you remember last season, I gave you guys the tip that if you set the game options, to let the game handle academics. Remember that? So I used all my hours in week two. And so you can see last episode, I showed you after week three, where we were at negative 10 hours. And now coming into this week, we're at negative 30. Don't know why this happens. Don't know why the game allows it, but it only works to my knowledge if you have it set for the game to do the academics for you it still lets you put in academics while you have hours, but then the game will continue just to put these gratuitous hours. A little lanyap, uh, to use the uh, Cajun saying, a uh, little something extra, lanyap. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's what's going on there. So let's get back to it. We are into week six, and we are on the road up to Ohio to take on Akron, who are 0-5 on the season. This feels like a trap game, doesn't it? Well, let's get it played on the field. So this was interesting. We, at halftime, it was 31-17. They got the only points on a field goal to make it 31-20. And then they got, uh, they got 17 unanswered points in the fourth quarter, which we've seen a track record of in the last episode of giving up a lot of fourth quarter points. And they actually took the lead 35-31. And then we got a 30-yard touchdown pass. Mike Smith, our freshman, to Chris Emery, our number three receiver, who we talked about, uh, looking like he had the best hands on the team last episode. And that happened with two seconds left on the clock to salvage the victory. If we dive into the numbers, more first downs, 10 more. Uh, we had 20 more yards, but it looks like they got a lot of yards in the fourth quarter. Uh, they had 34 carries for 122 yards. We had 22 carries for nine yards. But again, we know we're not very good at, at on our offensive line. We're not very good at running back. So we are running a predominantly pass-centric offense this year. We do have runs turned on. Uh, mostly on first and second down at, or when it's like less than five, three to five yards to go on third down. So, you know, very specific numbers. Uh, 401 yards passing, 35 out of 66, which again, 70 is the 50% mark. So just over 50%. It's probably what, about 53% there. Uh, so not as high as we would like but uh, still positive. Anything north of 50 is very positive compared to last season. Uh, we did have three more interceptions, so let's take a look at who got them. So Williams had three touchdowns, two picks. Smith was 9 of 22, two touchdowns, one interception. And then Weaver actually got in the game, which tells me somebody got hurt. Uh, so hopefully it's not bad. We'll have to check that out. Uh, three of five with no scores. Emory led the way in receiving eight catches, 105 yards, three touchdowns. So very good on him. And one of two on field goals. And that was a 39-yarder. So if you're not familiar with field goals, so this is a, 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 a play to get points. And I'll kind of use the, the, the field here. So typically you try to throw or run the ball into the end zone, which is the, the black part on each end. 
Uh, if you do that, that's a touchdown. You get six points. If you're four, if you're three downs in and you haven't gotten a first down, you can try to kick the ball between these posts. These are called up the uprights or the field goal posts. Uh, if you kick the ball from the field and it goes through those, you get three points like we did right here. All right. Now, the way that they calculate the distance, so the the end zone is 10 yards deep. And then the, so the ball is snapped from the line of scrimmage. It goes seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. So, you know, if your ball's here, they snap the ball to the holder and he puts the ball down on the turf, on the grass, and that's where the kicker kicks it from. That's seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. That's factored into the distance of the field goal. So let's say you're at the 20 yard line. That means you're kicking from the 27 plus the 10. That makes that, that from the 20 yard line is a 37 yard field goal. So just add 17 yards to wherever the ball is starting from. So if you're at the 40, that's a 57 yard field goal. If you're at the 10, it's a 27 yard field goal. So that's how you can determine what the line of scrimmage was uh, on a kick if you weren't aware. Uh, so on this one, they we were at the 22 yard line, so right about here, and they snapped the ball back to about here and then kicked it through the uprights. Uh, a really good field goal kicker can kick 45 to 55 yard field goals. A really good one. A not so good one like ours struggles to get to 40. <laughs> so what that means is you're you're basically having to get inside the 15 yard line just to try a field goal. But if you're getting inside the 20, that's what's called the red zone. And that's where you need to be converting red zone opportunities into touchdowns to really be a good team to win a lot of games. So that's the drawback of not having a good field goal kicker because they expand the field for scoring opportunities in into areas where you shouldn't be hoping for touchdowns. So if that makes sense. All right, so that is uh, another non-conference game. So we're now four and one. So that's good. Now we go back home to Cajun Field and we'll take on North Texas. And Williams did get hurt. He's got a thumb fracture. So let's see what the co the assistant coach suggests. It suggests still playing him. So we will do that. Tijerina is out with a groin pull. He's out for one to three weeks. So when we do that, he will disappear from the depth chart. You can see we're now back three deep on with our actual defensive ends. So we don't have to put a defensive tackle in there. So that's good. I am going to drop this to 38 yards. And I am going to drop this to 60%, but still 100% on third down. This third down, that's where you want to make sure you get a first down. We want our best guy in the game. All right, this one, we are eight-point favorites. And we come up on the short end of a 21-16 final. So this one's interesting. We actually had a big second quarter, but you can see we got a 19-yard field goal, a 30-yard field goal, a 61-yard touchdown pass, but only led 13-10. And that's converting more field goals than touchdowns. They got a safety, then a 13-yard touchdown run, and then we got a 49-yard field goal, and they kicked a 22-yard field goal. So even, even with our field goal, we weren't taking the lead. Now, if we look at the stats, more first downs, more yards by about 150. 39 out of 63, so well north of 50%. Now, they did have 45 carries for 146 yards. Now, this is something to look at. We still ran 85 plays. But remember last episode, we had that one game where we ran 96? So time of possession is really key and something you need to learn how to utilize. So we actually won the time of possession game. But you have to keep in mind, running the ball 
takes more time off the clock. So if you're familiar with football manager or, you know, parking the bus, when you're playing a, a team that's a lot better than you in American football, it's not uncommon to run the ball more than you pass the ball because then you can milk the clock. You can run that 30 second play clock all the way down every play and it cuts down on how many snaps the other team gets. Because if they're really better than you, they should beat you. I mean, this would be like uh, like Arsenal playing somebody in, in League One, right? And so you would expect Arsenal to win, but if the other team parks all 11 players inside the six-yard box with their hands behind their back, right? even Arsenal may have a harder time breaking that down and finding the net. And so you you know that's why you see these upsets in the FA Cup, you know, and that's kind of what these smaller teams shoot for. And so running the ball gives you a at least brings you on a more level com, you know competitive playing field uh with clubs that are better than you. And you can see that. I mean, they only had 20 passes. We had 63. They had 30 more run plays to our 40 more pass plays, but still ended up right even with us in time of possession. And that really cut into our ability to have possibly one or two or even three extra possessions to try to score in this game. So, you know, and that, and in this case, it, they got us. Uh, so Williams, 20 out of 40. Smith actually had his best game of the season, uh, 19 of 23, 130 yards. Uh, both of them were sacked several times. White, 5 of 34. Emery, number one receiver again, 7 for 114. So, you know, this is just one of those games you look at and go, wow, we probably should have won this based on the stats. But the fact that they were able to, and if we could have stopped the run, then that would have backfired, but we couldn't stop it. That's how it goes. All right, Williams with that thumb fracture is progressing well. We are on the road this week. Now we are now six games in. I'm going to play one more, and then I'm going to go back in and kind of revamp that playbook one more time. But we do need to still do our playbook, I mean our depth chart, and we are... Seven point underdogs. So we are we are picked to lose this game. And the score shows that this might be our best game all season. 20 to 2. Now this is interesting. They actually had more first downs. We got outgained for the first time all season, and yet we still won the game. They had 218 yards. We were north of the 50% mark, so that's positive. They had three interceptions, and they had one lost fumble. So we won the turnover battle. You can see that with their number of runs, they actually controlled the clock. So the big play was by our defense. They were actually, it's a 98-yard interception return. So that means Olsen caught the ball on the interception at the two-yard line, like right here and ran it all the way back to the other end of the field for a touchdown. So that's a huge play because they were about to get a touchdown and instead we get a touchdown. So instead of being 7 to 3 with them winning, it's now 10 nothing. They did get Mike Smith for a safety. We got a 24-yard field goal, a 31-yard field goal, and then a 38-yard pass from Williams to Joseph White and that clinched the game. So even though they had a lot of yardage, you know, there's a, there's a saying in football, between the 20s, you let them gain all their yards between the 20s, and then you tighten up and you don't let them advance through the red zone and get points. And this is a perfect example of how that panned out. You know, but that interception by our defense, huge play. That was by Jeffrey Olson. But you can see he is not uh, leading the way. Nash still has two interceptions to lead the team. But that gives us a 5-2 and two record on the season. One went away from bowl eligibility. Two and one in the conference. 
So we are doing well there. We are actually one game behind Arkansas State, but now we hold the tiebreaker in head-to-head. -head. So that means if we end up with the same record as them, we will win the conference. And we only need one more win with five to play, one in five to be bowl eligible. We've got one more game for this episode. It's Florida Atlantic. Let's get it played. All right, we've gone in. We've readjusted our playbook now that we've had another run of a couple of games. I usually do it after the first three or four, and then after you know, then I wait another three or f three games, and I do another set. Uh, so you know that way, and then I kind of go with that the rest of the season. Um, although if I see a play that's not getting a response, that's not performing well. I'll kick those out all the way up to the last week of the season or, or the postseason or whatever. All right, we are seven-point favorites here. This win could make us bowl eligible. This is a huge game for us. I'm still showing an email. Why? Okay, yep. So that's who I'm inviting this week. All right, let's get it played. Hopefully the home fans can cheer us on. And this is a throwback to what we saw last episode. Uh, dominating the early portion of the game, you know, dominating is relative, but uh, 13 to 3 winning, and then we give up 17 unanswered points and cannot make a dent in the fourth quarter. Uh, they do have more first downs, uh, a lot more yardage, 449 to our 273, uh, 15 carries for 24 yards, 27 of 51 passing. So that's just north of 50%, not near the 60 or 70 that we would like. Uh, one interception and no fumbles. So this is a, you know, th there's, a, there's a statistic in football uh, that if you win the turnover battle, you usually win the game. Not always. You can see that uh, both sides had one interception. We had two fumble recoveries. So we won the turnover battle by causing three turnovers to only giving up one, just didn't pan out in this one. Four for four inside the red zone, not a good day for us. Williams, 25 of 45. Brown, two for 22. So our yards per carry were pretty good, just not, not the quantity. And I'm not upset about that because wasn't expecting it. Seven for 92 for, for Emery, one touchdown. Two of three on field goals, 40 was his long. And you have to remember, every time you go into the game plan and you, you change anything, this gets reset as well. So if you want this field goal range to be something different, or if you, you know, there's, a, there's that high school coach up in the Northwest, I want to say in Washington State, uh, he never punts, ever. Uh, so, you know, you could actually change this to be 100% on fourth down, never to kick a field goal. Um, I might want to do that. We got a quarterback that's better than 50-50 on throwing the ball. Maybe we want to up that. Not sure. We'll think about it. I probably won't remember next episode. But uh, here we go. So we're 2-2 two and two in the conference. And you can see there is a marked difference in the conference. Uh, so we, we've played four games, and if we look at points, uh, we've got 91, but there are four other teams that have scored over 100. Now, 71 points, there's only two teams that have given up less in the conference. So that supports our, you know, we're now 30 and 34 offensive and defensive. But that is a concern. That is a concern. Still five and three on the season. We're eight games in, so we've got four left for next episode. We need one in four to be bowl eligible. But again, in the lower conferences, there's no guarantee that you're going to get a bowl game just because you get to six wins. You kind of have to be the conference champions at this level. But what I'm hoping at this point is if we can finish four and three, right? That's two and one. 
in our next three conference games. That puts us at seven and four and guarantees us a winning record. We may not be bowl eligible, but that may get the attention of an athletic director at a slightly bigger school. Now, if we look at the overall standings, I'm going to jump up to the top here. So you have the ACC. This is one of the Power Five, sort of. Uh, Clemson's there, but you see this is not the Clemson that you know today. Uh, <laughs> they are uh, not that Clemson. Florida State is the dominant team in this one, and Miami, and Virginia Tech. And if you go back five years, that's what you're going to see. Uh, the Big East has kind of fallen off. They're now kind of a second tier. Um, you know, they were huge in basketball, but, and of course, Rutgers has moved on to the Big Ten, but, you know, this is the Big East at the time that this mod was done. The Big Ten, only one division instead of two, like you see today, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, all up there. The Big 12, so again, those are two big conferences. Conference USA is kind of a second division, second tier Independence, outside of Notre Dame, everybody there is an also-ran. Nobody cares about them, basically. Uh, and I'm very pro-military. Uh, go Air Force. Um, the Mid-American is another second to third tier. Mountain West is a second to third tier. Pac-10, which is now the Pac-12, uh, they're a top, top division. SEC, of course. Then the Sun Belt's a third tier, the WAC's a third tier. Um, so, you know, there's three levels. We're definitely in the lower level. So what we would like to see happen is a club like, say, a Boise State that's a dominant side in one of these third tiers. You know, there's no reason for me to change in the Sun Belt, but if we can come up, find a team that can compete for national recognition, at this level, a Utah, BYU, uh, those would be something. Or find a club now in the Mid-American, in the Mountain West. These would be the clubs, that, the clubs, the teams that we would be looking to maybe have their coaches get promoted to a bigger program, leaving an opening for someone like me to step into and take that next step in my coaching journey. So that's kind of what we're looking for here. And this is kind of similar to the football manager journeyman. You've got your lower league. We're in lower league management now. We're kind of looking for something to get into that league two, league one, you know, a club that's kind of ready to make that step into the championship and then be able to take a step into the premier league you know, Lee Un, whatever you have. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Guys, we will pick up there next episode to end out season three, see how we end up. Will we make the playoffs or a bowl game this year? We'll find out. Hit that like button, subscribe for daily content on the channel, and we will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.